quick update what I'm doing. Just uh, heat treated some blades, just doing a hardness test on them. Forgive my wife talking in the background. Yeah, just let the uh, the dial settle. This is uh, as quenched hardness readings I'm looking for. I'm hoping to get my target is 65 plus HRC. And I virtually consistently get that. I'm waiting for that little uh, lever to finish its travel, which it has. That one there. And then I'm going to push it back and see where the needle ends up. Here we go. Oh, that's not too bad. What's that saying then? 66. Spot on. Spot on. Well, here's the knives. Uh, four Hornets. Two classics, but this one hasn't got a logo. Well, it has, it's on that side. It's, um, it's going to be a left handed knife for somebody. Anyway, that's their hardened states. You can, if you observe it enough, you'll just see the little dimples. Can you see that? The Rockwell hardness marks. They've all passed, I'm glad to say. Now tempering. This is my, uh, my flat plate piece of glass. And I've worked out which way the... Um, I've worked out which way the blades are, are warped because they are all warped a little bit. And then I place them, um, how can I say this, warped apex to warped apex, so they're opposite ways around. And uh, to show you the degree of warp, uh, there you see we're on the pommels there we're flat, but look, can you see the warp? It's dreadful but I'm not in the least worried about that because I'll clamp them all together and uh, they'll come out straight after the tempering cycle if I clamp them together that way both the blades are warping the same way and when you come to temper them you'll never get the warp out that's why you always clamp apex of warp against apex of warp and that will uh, be much more effective. I'll just show you the degree of the warping. Um, can you see that? It's massive. Absolutely massive, but they're all... The, the apexes are all facing each other, so when I've clamped them together, they're going to come down really f flat, a lot more... Um, the, the blades will be under more tension, and then it's that tension which loses its memory, so to speak, and a new memory is given to the steel during the temper cycle. So I'm going to get these clamped up now. There's a couple of classics I'm doing. Uh, and the warps on these... About 2 mil tip to tip. That'll come out quite nice. OK, let's get them clamped up.
it's a new day uh, and I finished the temper cycles with the knives now all clamped up um, the first two temper cycles uh, they're two hours each and the the knives are all always clamped up at that point so up to now they've only had one Rockwell reading taken and that was after the quench and they came out around about 65.5 to 66 HRC which is basically about as hard as you'll ever get O1 to go um, so I haven't taken them to their final target Rockwell readings yet which will be about 59 these will be somewhere in the order at the moment of about 60 to 61 HRC 60 to 60.5 HRC uh, I know that through experience but um, what I will do is unclamp the knives test them on my flat plate for flatness uh, and then um, test each knife for its present Rockwell hardness just to make sure that they are where I want them to be and then I'll adjust the temperature for the last temper cycle this would be their third temper cycle and in that last temper cycle I'll get the reading down to exactly where I want it which is be about 59 uh, the other thing that I should mention also is that I find that to get them really really flat uh, not only are they clamped counter bend to counter bend so to speak or apex of bend to apex of bend but the first temper cycle is a few degrees cooler than the next temper cycle and that just seems to sort of just reinforce the uh, the the the, uh, the sort of what I want the blades to do to take on a new set basically to become flat so anyway uh, I hope I'm making myself clear I tend to I know in my head what I want to say but it doesn't seem to come out that way sometimes anyway let's test on the flat plate and see how flat they are well this is my my glass flat plate here it's a half inch piece of plate glass I've got a piece of cardboard just to stop the um, the clamp from scratching the glass basically so I'm gonna unclamp the blades now and it, it, it's always a bit of a intriguing time because it works like magic there's no skill required in getting the blades flat it's just um, physics so there's all the uh, the hornets and there's the two classics the early indications look good So there's my flat, my flat plate. Let's make sure it's flat. Make sure there's no bits of debris on it. That's uh, well, the Hornets were quite um, warped, if you can remember. Can you see that? It's massive. Absolutely massive. That's pretty flat. That one's pretty flat. That one's pretty flat. 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 
flat flat they're all flat so there they are they're all flat now the colors the colors you see these these colors here they indicate the temperatures now this is a purple color which indicates a hot uh, a hotter temperature than the the straw color um, the actual true oxidational color is this straw color here I find that where you've had the anti-scale compound it affects the color readings so you get the readings the readings are skewed somewhat the colors are not the correct color for the temperature and you can see that because the blades were dipped uh, it, to the blade not the handle it's only the blades not the handles that get the color change so that's around about 215 centigrade for that final second temper and it's the same on the the classics you see the color change is a deeper purple on the the blade where it's been dipped into the anti-scale compound anyway I'm going to get these uh, the rock bar measurements um, tested now adjust them uh, adjust the uh, the oven for its final temper cycle uh, and that'll be the tempering and heat treatment of these knives finished but there you go that that's the two classics they had the slight warp if you remember now the dead flat there's the uh, the hornets they had uh, quite massive warps if you can remember absolutely massive now uh, the dead flat this is uh, a happy day making some measurements now on these uh, these blades so what I'm doing I'm gonna the, the diamond indenter has just contacted the test piece and I'm gonna wind in one fluid motion you, you mustn't if, if you you mustn't unwind and then wind up again that'll give you a wrong reading so what I want to do is bring this the big needle around three times the little needle which you can't quite see will, will be on a red dot and the top needle the big needle will point at the 12 o'clock position so we go around three times it's one two three and you you see it with one fluid motion and then you adjust this this dial swings left and right so you adjust it for bang on the C and the B the C stands for the outer HRC scale the B the red scale is the HRB scale which you use for softer measuring softer metals down on this part of the Rockwell tester I've got the uh, the unloading lever and then when I it's like a trigger when I pull that this bigger loading handle will unload slowly this way and the uh, the large needle will will uh, rotate anti-clockwise so here we go there it goes it's unloading now this lever here is gradually falling back when it comes to a stop which it will when it gets to about this position we'll wait a few moments and then we'll unload it and see what the measurement is Right, then we can now unload that and see what we got. So we're around about 59.5 HRC. So we're about half a Rockwell uh, on the hard side. So I'll just temper it maybe another 
10 or 15 degrees hotter than its previous temper uh, and that should bring me back into the ballpark figure where I want to be.